Hi, thanks for checking out another video from All Things Flight Simulator X. This is a lesson that also had a bug in it. This is the Private Pilot Lesson 5. Uh, it would not complete the mission because the instructor would just stop interacting with you while he had control of the airplane. And uh, stick around at the end and I will give you three lines of code to insert into the original script and that will fix it. Let's get started. If you're comfortable with flying the airplane, we can spice things up a bit. The air traffic control system will add a lot of realism to your flights. We're sitting on the ramp at Renton Field near Seattle, Washington. In this lesson, we'll taxi, take off, and land at another airport while communicating with air traffic control. Now you've done your homework, right? Press the accent key yes, or the sir. scroll lock key to display the air traffic control window. The air traffic control window appears with a menu of messages. Press accent or scroll lock again and the air traffic control window hides. You can display or hide the window anytime you want. It will automatically appear when messages are sent to you from air traffic control. You know how to display the air traffic control window, so if it's hidden, display it. Note that the first line in the ATC window reads, choose an option for rent and ground. Below that, you have two choices in the menu, but I don't want you to choose either of these just yet. A great tool in Flight Simulator that will help you manage the radios is the auto-tune feature. Flight Simulator automatically tunes the radios for you. You can also tune the radios manually if you want to, but anytime you select items from the ATC menu that would require a frequency change, the radio will automatically be tuned to the next frequency for you. You can choose menu items by pressing the corresponding number on the top row of the computer keyboard. Today's flight will be made under VFR or visual flight rules, and to get the local weather, we'll listen to the ADIS, otherwise known as Automatic Terminal Information Service at Renton Municipal Airport. In a moment, I want you to tune and listen to the ADIS. By selecting ADIS from the menu, the frequency will be tuned automatically, and that's why the feature is called Auto-Tune. The broadcast repeats over and over, so feel free to listen to it until the message makes sense. When you are finished listening to the ADIS, Press 1. Go ahead and press 2 on the top row of the keyboard to select Tune Renton ATIS on 126.95. Pressing 2 now. Renton Airport Information Bravo, 2014 Zulu. Wind calm, visibility greater than 20 miles. Sky condition clear. Temperature 152.5. Altimeter 2902. Visual runway 15. Okay, now that you've tuned the ground frequency, notice that you have new options in the menu. When you select an option, you'll hear the pilot request, that's you, and then the ground controller's response. The flight to pain takes us north, so press the 4 key. Pressing 4. Renton Ground, Cessna Echo, Charlie Kilo, November Charlie, with Bravo, request taxi for takeoff, north departure. Cessna Echo, Charlie Kilo, November Charlie, taxi to and hold short of runway 15. Pressing control right bracket. I'm not acknowledging it. Did you notice the pilot text was orange and the controller text was green? When the controller talks to you, he or she is usually expecting a response. Now I'm acknowledging it. Taxi, Pressing one. Hold short runway one five via taxiway alpha. Cessna Kilo November Charlie. Now we're pressing control bracket again. We've got the OK, so let's taxi to the north end of runway 15. It's to the left. I'm going to turn this off and taxi on over. Also, by this time, we're supposed to have known that we. Uh, when you get to the runway, stop just short of the runway and select Request Takeoff VFR. As I was saying, we're supposed to have one degree of flaps. Not one degree, I misspoke, just one. One click of the, 
one click of the flaps and on this point, the first level, whatever the degrees are, I'm not positive. And we're also supposed to know our ground that we stop right here at the double line. Now, I will press the control bracket to reactivate rod. You probably noticed that after getting your takeoff clearance, the menu once again included an acknowledgement. If you delay acknowledging the clearance, the controller asks you if you copied or heard the message. After you acknowledge the takeoff clearance, get rolling down the runway. You can close or move the air traffic control window during takeoff if you like. Oh, I already did that wrong. Renton Tower, Cessna Echo, Charlie Kilo, November Charlie, Radiant, runway 15, North Departure. That was supposed to have done that before we had him talk. Then we would have been acknowledging this. We would have heard him. Not a big deal. Ready to take off. The menu now reads, currently no message to transmit to Renton Tower on 124.7. As soon as you're off the ground, however, you have two messages to choose from. One, request touch and go. Two, request full stop landing. There it is. Positive rate flaps up. You could use either of those if you wanted to, to come back and land at Renton right away. I'm going to take control and fly around for a bit while you drink your coffee. I'm going to turn the ATC off. While we take a look at the right seat. And wait for us to get a little bit of height so that the photoreal scenery starts, gets unblurry. three views I rarely use. I know all this has been done before and there's other videos out there, but Many with photo reel. I don't think any, I've seen anybody with photo reel on here. Or saying anything about the fix. I saw one where the guy didn't finish it, but he didn't mention to anybody that, that uh, anything about fixing it. think in the comments they said oh you could google around to find out like that was nice so I'm trying to be a little nicer I did do the google around and I found out and I've simplified his fix to be simply an addition of three lines of code into the script instead of a few other You should see Mercer Island ahead of you now and the city of Bellevue slightly to the right. Before you get to the north end of Mercer Island, the tower controller is going to tell you that you're leaving the Renton airspace and that you should change frequencies. So we need to be up here and wait for those things to happen. Or have ATC up and wait for them to happen. You 
seagulls or something. Turn that out for a second. We'll turn it back on. We don't really have to have that on. They're going to tell us when uh, we're leaving their airspace. Not sure if that's is that rainy here back there? I think it is. That is Renton. We are gonna be going by Seattle's right there. There we go. Airspace changes tune Seattle. Pressing one, tuning Seattle. Now we have to wait to request Class B airspace transition when it becomes available. And then press control bracket to bring him back on. Bring the trainer back on. It's one of those cases where sometimes these uh, lessons, or even in missions, where sometimes they're ahead of you when they talk and you have to wait a little while, like in this case, to catch up with that. There it is. And sometimes it's the opposite. Sometimes you're already there and they're behind you. Seattle's approach. Cessna Echo Charlie Kilo November Charlie Type Cessna Kayak 5 miles northeast of Boeing. Request clearance to transition Bravo airspace. Looks like a hawk. Seattle approach. Okay, instead of uh, doing that, I'm doing control bracket. Bring him on. The controller told you to squawk. No, that doesn't mean you should flap your wings and make chicken sounds. It means the numeric code approach control gave you should be dialed into your transponder. The easiest way for you to do that is just let Auto-Tune do it for you. Press 1 to acknowledge the squawk code, and it's done. Squawk 3662, Cessna Kilo, November Charlie. Cessna Kilo, November Charlie. Radar contact 5 miles southeast at 0, 20, 0, 2000. Clear to the Bravo airspace. Approach control told us that they can see us on radar and told us where we are. If the location they described was not where we knew ourselves to be, we'd know the controller was looking at the wrong radar target. If you want to hear that message again, select Say Again from the menu. Otherwise, press 1 to acknowledge the radar contact. Acknowledging, pressing 1. Bravo, airspace, Cessna, Kilo, November, Charlie. We're now pressing the control bracket. Again, right bracket. If there was other traffic up here that was in conflict with our flight, we now get advisories from the approach controller. To make things simple today, we told all the other pilots to stay home. The sky is all ours. You're starting to get the idea, right? You make a request, ATC responds, you respond, and so on. The menu always changes to display choices that are appropriate for the situation. For example, now the menu choices are different, but we don't want to choose any of these. We could if they fit our plans, but we're going to land at Snohomish or Payne Field. You know what? Let's just close the air traffic control window for now if you want. Press the accent key or the scroll lock to close the ATC window. That beautiful lake below us is Lake Washington. At the north end is Kenmore Air Harbor. I'll just let you fly in silence for a while. I guess I could turn our landing light off, huh? Press 2 Select Landing Airport. The menu displays a list of 10 nearby airports. Find Snohomish County, KPAE, in the list and select it. Okay, 
Dade Nearest Airport list number two is not on this list, so we go number nine for farther ones. These will move along as you get closer and farther away, so you have to catch them before they change the number on you. Number six. Okay, PAE, but don't tune it yet because they didn't tell you to. Control right bracket again, bring him back on. Now the menu displays quite a few options. Remember that our goal is to enter the pattern, land, and taxi to parking at Snohomish County, Payne Field. Listen to the ADIS first. When finished listening to ADIS, select Tune Payne Tower on 120.2. Okay, we're going to listen to ADIS. This is what we would do in normal cases. Report information, Tango. Obviously. Wind, calm, visibility, greater than 20 miles. Sky condition, clear. Temperature, 1 warm. Before you make a choice from the tower menu, note that the last item in the menu is back. Many of the menus in air traffic control have this feature so you can move back up the menu when necessary. Select request full stop landing. Be sure you always acknowledge the controller's instructions. I'm going to give you control of the aircraft and let you handle it from here. Pain tower and ground control will tell you what to do. Just follow their instructions and make choices from the menu. Runway 16 left is the short runway on the east side of Payne Field. We want to enter the pattern as instructed by the tower. The tower will then give you clearance to land. He wouldn't have said any of these things without the fix. You would have just been heading there. I like to know down there is that Kenmore uh, uh, water port where all those planes are at, and that's where they have to take off for the San Juan. Uh, mission, Friday Harbor mission. Okay, now that he's done talking, I'll go ahead and request the full stop landing. Pain Tower, Cessna Echo, Charlie Kilo, November Charlie, is one, one miles south with Tango to land. Cessna Echo, Charlie Kilo, November Charlie, Pain Tower, center south, downwind, runway 16, south, altimeter 2, 9 or 9 or 2. Plus one to acknowledge that pattern. Flight left, traffic, runway one, six, left, Cessna Kilo, November, Charlie. And turn it off. And enjoy the view on the way in. Here went another hawk. It's like I-5. And I can tell because it just comes up to the right of Seattle. That is Interstate 5 right below us. And I ought to be checking out. I ought to be turning right here. Right up the middle. 
to the left downwind, but left downwind on the short one is about uh, right up the, <laughs> the middle between the two airports. I'm not sure if that's kosher or not, since I'm not a pilot. Maybe left downwind we should be completely to the left of both of them. Anyone who want to leave a comment that knows that, that would be nice. Charlie, cleared to land, runway 16 left. Cleared to land, runway 16 left. Cessna Kilo, November Charlie. Okay, as soon as we get out of here, we're going to turn around and fly to the right. Cessna Kilo, November Charlie. 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 Cessna Kilo, I'm going to start slowing down. I think we'll get some flaps going here. It'll help us slow down. Yep. Still looking into the back seat. Shot it, didn't I? Yes. As you turn on to final, note that a new menu item appears. Report go around. If it doesn't look like you're set up well for the landing, select report go around and we'll go around and try it again. It wasn't there because we have plenty of time. at the right height. Uh, I'm at about 90. 80, 90, that's good. I think. We're going to do another level of flaps, final full flaps. That means I'm too low. There I am, I'm back on the glide path. Alrighty then. I recall once we get on the threshold, it's cut. Cut the power. We're at 60. Don't do it too soon. There we go. That was a little rough. Now they're going to tell us to get off the runway, but he wants us to stay on until we stop. See, they said when able, but he's slow down. Like, slow down. Stall. Okay, I won't drag this out. We're just going to stop while he finishes saying what he wants to say. Good job. You see, interacting with air traffic control isn't so hard. In fact, it's a great help in many situations. Just remember to listen carefully and to respond to controller messages. Once you're comfortable with air traffic control, you may want to try tuning the radios yourself. See the air traffic control handbook for tips on tuning radios manually. Good job, Captain. There's only one more approach to deal with, and that's coming up in the next lesson. As a good educational aid, why don't you check out the flight analysis while I go park the airplane? Okay. Now I'm going to tell you, show you the fix really fast. 
I have already just opened up your your uh, FSX directory lessons folder PRIB is for the private pilot lessons folder and there are our lessons with our flight plans and I'm not sure what the WX file is yet the ABIL file is the script you can open that with notepad um, like some people don't think that you can but you can I'm going to tell it not to associate so we're opening it all the time we don't want to do that we're just going to open it one time with with notepad keep scrolling down until you get to a procedure that is in between each procedure is in between these little uh, those forward slashes and forget this this was my backup copy you will find when you get when you get look at yours and if it hasn't been touched it should be exactly like that uh, exactly like that that is the way it comes all you need to do is come to the end of this line put your cursor right there and insert the three lines that I have left in the description or you can copy them from here I'm just making them all line up here okay those three lines right there just insert them right in between the right line case F1 and the beginning of this if statement there all right thanks for uh, you know checking out the video I hope this helps for new people or and people who did not know how to fix this one if you uh, want to fix the bug on uh, student lesson number three climbs and descents I also have a video on that and check out that video for that fix again thank you very much please thumbs up and subscribe to uh, all things flight simulator X